Hi, this is the first video of chapter 4, Input Markets. In this video we are going to talk about the labor demand. Okay, so just to begin, in this chapter, as I have said, we are going to study the market of factors, which is also called as the input market. But all what we have learned in the market of products, which is what we have studied until now, also called the output market, we are going to translate this or transfer this knowledge to the market of factors. Okay, so in the market of products, we were studying how the firms sell the goods and the services and how the consumers decide to buy them. So the firm has had to decide how much quantity to produce and the consumer had to decide how much quantity to buy. Okay. Also, the price was decided only in the, in the circumstances where we had imperfect competition. Because when we have perfect competition, we know that the price is given in the market. So we are going to transfer all this knowledge to the market of factors, where uh, the stuff that uh, is exchanged is exactly the factors. So the firms will decide to hire more workers and this factor will be labor or they could decide to hire more capital, raw materials or any other factors that to, you can imagine. But in this case, to simplify in this micro course, we are going to focus on labor. Okay, so then the type of markets are going to be similar to the output markets. So we again will have a perfect competition or a perfect competitive market, we will have monopsony power and we will have monopoly power. When we refer to the perfect competition with a, to a perfect competitive uh, market, we will see that there are going to be many firms who want to hire workers and many workers who want to uh, offer their job. Okay, so in this case, when we talk about the market of factors or the input market, we see that the consumers become uh, workers. They offer in this case, instead of demand, they are going to offer their, their job, their, their work. Okay, while the firms are going to demand, in this case, they will be on the demand side because they are going to demand workers, they are going to demand labor, they are going to demand hours of work. Okay, so they will be on the other side. If we have a perfectly competitive market, we will see that there are going to be many firms demanding workers and many workers offering their work. Then if we, if we have a monopsony power, the monopsony power in the market of products means that we have only one consumer who has the power. But here, the demand comes from the firm side, so the monopsony power will mean that the firm have market power to decide the salary. So this could mean that, mean that there is only one firm offering this uh, type of work. Then if we have monopoly power, it will mean that there are going to be workers who have the market power. So there are very few or only one type of worker, only one worker, who can decide, who can negotiate uh, the salary. The salary is the price in the market of labor. Okay, so here the salary will have this um, role as the price when we were talking about the market of products. So then when we talk about the demand for labor, we know as I have said, that the demand is coming from the firm. The firm is the one that is going to demand labor. So it will be a derived demand. Why do we talk about a derived demand? This is a very important concept. We talk about the derived demand because the demand of labor depends on the firm level of output. So it depends on the market of products and not only on the market of inputs. It depends on how many how many units of product does the firm want to produce. And also it depends on the cost of the input itself, on the cost of the factors. 
okay, from the cost of the of the labor. So the aim here is to analyze where is the optimum, where what number, which number of workers, or if we are talking about the market of capital, we will have to focus on the quantity of capital that the firm is going to hire to maximize the profits. So a firm will hire additional units of production factor of labor or capital or whatever until the point where the additional revenue obtained by hiring one more unit is equal to the additional cost. And this is the first order condition. It means that if I want to maximize, if I want to maximize the or to minimize here the cost to maximize the profits or to minimize the cost what i have to do is to make the derivative of the total revenue with respect to the capital and equal this to the derivative of the total cost with respect to the capital if we are talking about maximizing the profits that come from the use of capital but if i talk about the labor market what i have to do is to uh, equal the derivative of the total revenue with respect to labor to the derivative of the total cost with respect to labor. I, and this is how I, I'm maximizing the profits. Because when I maximize the profits, I make the derivative of the pro profits equal to zero, which means that the derivative of the total revenue minus the derivative of the total cost is equal to zero. And then, consequently, this inequality is fulfilled. Okay, so the derivative of the total revenue with respect to A will equal to the derivative of the total cost with respect to A. Okay, so when we have a labor market in perfect competition, as I have said, we have a high number of firms and a high number of workers. And none of them has market power to influence the price. And this is one of the conditions to have a perfect competition. So all of them are price takers, which means that they don't decide the salary, and the salary is the price in this market. So the characteristics is that we have a large number of firms that compete with each other and demand the workers for identical jobs. So they offer exactly the same job. Then you don't care if you are a worker, you don't care to work for one company or for another. The second characteristic is that there, there are many workers with identical qualifications. So the firms doesn't mind, they don't mind to her to hire one worker or another because you don't have anything that differentiates you as a worker. So the workers have the same qualification and they offer their work independently. And third, there is perfect information and perfect mobility and this is cost free it has no cost no transaction cost no other cost okay so there are no entry or exit barriers for example so then the determinants of the demand are more or less what we have here there are more but we are going to pay attention just to, to this okay so the first one is the product demand if there is a variation in the demand of a product in the i mean in the market of products that increases the price it will increase the marginal revenue product and it will increase the demand of labor okay so if the price increases if the price of a product increases at the end the firm will be able to increase the number of workers that she want to hire or that it wants to hire okay so then the second is the productivity if there is no change, if the, if Ceteris uh, paribus is fulfilled, there is no other variables, there are no other variables changing, the, an increase in the productivity of labor increases the demand of labor. Okay, so if the workers are becoming more uh, productive, the firm will be able to hire more workers because they will be producing more, the benefits will increase, and so on and so forth. And the third, the price of other factors. So when the production factors are, for example, complementary, and increasing the price of a complementary uh, production factor reduces the demand of labor. So imagine that I uh, that I am working in a hospital and I am a doctor. 
and uh, I also need nurses to work here. If I don't have uh, one of them, if I have doctors but I don't have nurses, the hospital cannot work. If I have nurses but I don't have doctors, the hospital cannot work. So the, the, these both uh, positions in the hospital are complementary. Okay, so then imagine that the price of the doctors, the salary that the doctors get increases. It means that the number of doctors that I will be able to hire will decrease, but also at the same time it will decrease the number of nurses because I will have less money to hire them, to both of them, because they are complementary. Then if the factor are substitutes, just the opposite case, an increase in the price of a substitute increases the demand of labor. So imagine, imagine that I have a telecommunications company and I can hire someone to work for me making the software. Okay, so producing software. I can hire an engineer in telecommunications or I can hire an engineer uh, in informatics and I don't care which of them is working for me if they know how to produce the software. So, if the salary of the engineers in telecommunication increases, then I will be able to hire less engineers in telecommunication, but I will be able to increase my demand of engineers in informatics because they don't have, they have not increased their salary. Okay, so I will substitute one for the other. Then I have the number four, which is the number of firms. If the number of firms in the market increases, the demand of labor will increase. There will be more firms uh, trying to hire people and then the demand of labor will increase, obviously. Okay, so then how can I compute the demand of labor? This is the function of the demand of labor. It will depend on the salary. How it depends on the salary? Well, the relationship between the demand of labor from a company and the salary is negative because if the salary in a market increases, the companies that are operating in this market will be able to hire less workers. Okay, then that's why this relationship is negative. So then we have a constant, which is A, and then another constant, which is B, that is multiplying the, the wage, the salary. Okay. So this function is the demand of labor, but if we clear from here the W, then we write W equal to LD minus something, blah, blah, blah we will find also the function of the marginal revenue product of labor because the marginal revenue product of labor is exactly the inverse demand of labor and this is very important in this in this chapter because you have to use it for the exercises then the firm has a number of workers which sell and has to decide if it should hire one more worker or not so uh, the firm is going to do a marginal analysis then the firm should hire one more worker if the additional revenue generated by this worker the marginal revenue product of labor is greater than its cost and the cost of hiring one more worker is exactly the salary so the marginal cost of hiring one more workers is exactly the salary, the wage, okay? And then the additional revenue generated by the worker is called the marginal revenue product of labor. This is what we have here. And that's all for the moment. See you in the next video.